TikTokers are taking Benadryl for fun. The after effects are anything but fun. I recently reported a case of a 21-year-old woman who presented to the emergency room after drinking more than one gram of Benadryl in two bottles. This is a recent occurrence. Lots of news reports lately about TikTokers taking in huge amounts of Benadryl as part of the Benadryl challenge. Some hospitals have reported in a single week a string of cases of people taking way too much Benadryl. If you look at TikTok, at least in early September 2020, there's not too much on this. If you search Benadryl and if you look for the challenge, those videos have been wiped clean off the platform. That's TikTok disincentivizing users from doing something that can kill you, and kill you in a way that's not fun. You're not gonna feel good while it's happening, and you're definitely not gonna feel good if you happen to survive it. Even people who take Benadryl at regular doses don't feel good while they're taking it, so just imagine taking 40 times of that. So I'm here to tell you, don't do it. The problems that come from taking too much Benadryl is a little complicated, but if you can understand some of the basics, it'll help you understand why they happen the way that they do. Benadryl is a brand name for the chemical called diphenhydramine. More casually, it can be called DPH, and it can also be named by its mechanism of action. So you'll hear some people refer to it as H1 blocker, but what's H1? And is the word blocker really the right word? Diphenhydramine is used as an allergy medicine. It's one of the oldest ones that you can still get. Allergies happen because your immune system releases a chemical called histamine. That's from the mast cells and granulocytes, degranulating, delivering the histamine. This is a good reminder that lots of the chemicals in the body are interrelated and they're from fundamental building blocks. The hist from histamine is from histidine, which is an amino acid. And we'll see more of these similarities very soon. Histamine causes the redness and swelling and itchiness that you get when you have an allergic reaction, whether it's cats or pollen or dust. It's the immune system delivering a reaction in what we think is an attempt to flush out allergens. Allergies are uncomfortable. The swelling gives you that stuffy nose, makes your eyes itchy and red. So if you can block the body's reaction to histamine, then you can mitigate that reaction. DPH doesn't stop the immune cells from releasing histamine, it inactivates the cell receptors from receiving histamine. Because instead of histamine, the cells receive diphenhydramine, which doesn't send the signal that histamine would, so that's why it's called blocker. Technically, it's not a receptor antagonist, it's an inverse agonist, meaning that it shifts the equilibrium of receptors to an inactivated state. That's a nice to know distinction, but clinically, it doesn't really have any impact on how a toxicity would be treated today. But there isn't only one type of histamine receptor, there's at least a few others. There's H2, H3, H4. Have you ever taken Pepsid or Tagamet for acid reflux or heartburn? Those are H2 blockers, so they're blocking histamine too, but specifically the H2 receptor subtype because histamine in the stomach stimulates acid production. So histamine's got different functions in different parts of the body, which is why you see Benadryl marketed as a sleep aid over the counter too. In the brain, histamine is involved in wakefulness regulation, energy and endocrine homeostasis, cognition and memory. Actually, in mammals, histamine is produced in the tuberomammillary nucleus, which is part of the hypothalamus. This is a small part of the brain that sits at the base and links the brain with endocrine regulation, so neurological signals stimulating the release of hormone signals all throughout the body. And so this system doesn't just exist in humans, it's conserved amongst mammals. Again, histamine is similar to histidine, has multiple functions in multiple parts of the body. So, if you're taking diphenhydramine that prevents histamine from working to deal with allergies, don't be surprised if that DPH affects other parts of the body where histamine does different things. And if you take a whole bottle of it for a TikTok video, don't be surprised if it shuts down those body parts that need histamine to function. This is why if you ever talk to a physician or a pharmacist, they'll tell you that DPH is a dirty medicine. Sure, it blocks allergies, but it also blocks wakefulness regulation, meaning that it'll make you sleepy and it'll block a variety of other things. Have you ever taken Benadryl for sleep before? Lots of times you might wake up feeling sluggish and gross. Often we call this a medicine hangover, and that's because Benadryl will stick around in your body for quite a while. And the problem is, it doesn't just interact with H1 receptors in the body, bringing us to why taking so much can be so deadly. You see, there's the sympathetic nervous system that handles fight or flight responses, and then there's the parasympathetic nervous system that handles rest and digest. In fight or flight mode, that's the sympathetic response, you'll have an overflow of adrenaline or epinephrine. Some medicines will overstimulate adrenergic receptors causing a sympathomimetic toxidrome. You become twitchy, sweaty, your pupils become dilated, and you pee your pants. 
In rest and digest mode, that's a parasympathetic response. You'll have an overflow of acetylcholine that stimulates your GI tract muscles, constricts your pupils, cause you to be sweaty, and slow down your heart rate. Some medicines will stop the breakdown of acetylcholine, meaning receptor overstimulation, causing a cholinergic toxidrome. So what would an anti-cholinergic toxidrome look like? Well, it would be a blocking of rest and digest, but not necessarily a promotion of fight or flight. Look at the structure of diphenhydramine. It happens to have a similar structure to acetylcholine. And human H1 receptors have almost 50% homology to the acetylcholine receptor. So if there's a huge amount of diphenhydramine in the body and all of the H1s have been bound, then by definition of taking too much, there's still more DPH floating freely around in the blood, and it binds to cholinergic receptors and inactivates them too, causing anticholinergic toxidrome. So this tells us just about everything we need to know about what taking too much Benadryl looks like. Blocking histamine in the brain blocks cognition, so we get delirium, psychosis, and disorientation. Histamine has some anticonvulsant activity, so if it's blocked, we can expect convulsant activity, and we see it in the form of seizures. No more rest and digest means dry mouth, no GI tract movements, pupils are dilated, opposite of what the pin needles are with cholinergic poisoning. No sweating, but the skin is red, no urination, so there's retention there too. Now the last part is a little unintuitive, but it's known from clinical experience. Diphenhydramine has the ability to block sodium channels in the heart in the setting of taking too much. Could be because of the two phenyl groups that's similar to other sodium channel blockers, so you're gonna see a QRS widening, QT prolongation, tachycardia on ECG, and so give sodium bicarbonate and magnesium to help stabilize things, lorazepam to stop the seizures. Poison centers sometimes say give activated charcoal within two hours of ingestion, but the the reality is, patients often come into the emergency room and we don't know how long ago they ingested. Sometimes we don't know how much they ingested because they may not know either. In literature, sometimes you see more than 300 tablets or more than 7 grams that were taken by the patient, which is a huge amount because at 1 gram of diphenhydramine, most of these symptoms present. We wouldn't give the activated charcoal if there's an altered mental status as the patient will probably aspirate it in that case. In some cases, report use of physostigmine, which is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, meaning that it stops the breakdown of acetylcholine and tries to overcome the anticholinergic blockade by increasing the presence of acetylcholine at the receptor. And so treatment for these patients is usually symptomatic and it's just waiting it out, which sounds terrible because if you've ever taken it as directed, sometimes that grogginess lasts for a while afterwards, up to a couple days. And so taking a whole bottle would just feel awful all around. And the patients who do seem to survive it seem to have residual effects for weeks to months afterwards. There's one more thing I want to mention. Diphenhydramine is lipophilic, likely how it gains access into the CNS. But this also means that lipid emulsion therapy could also work for this, and that's been documented in literature. Lipid emulsion therapy runs on the hypothesis that if a medicine is lipophilic, then infusing the emulsion into the body could act as a sink, where the medicine would bind stronger to the emulsion than to body tissue. That way, when the medicine is packed into the bulk flow of emulsion and then broken down, it alleviates systemic toxicity. This has been most documented in local anesthetic systemic toxicity. And this therapy has also shown a positive inotropy in the heart on infusion, which, as I stated in the Chubby Emu video for this case, could be because it switches myocardial energy source from glucose to fatty acid. Or it could be a stretch reflex upon volume infusion, as was simulated on a saline infusion. But lipid emulsion therapy has been talked about since the 90s. It's still considered salvage therapy, so if the patient has taken an obscene amount of DPH, like 400 caps, well, trying something is better than nothing. And so TikTok Benadryl challenge, not worth it. Doesn't feel great to begin with, can kill you in a fairly unglamorous way, and can leave you with residual effects lasting for weeks to months afterwards. Don't do it. And don't expect a quality following if that's what people know you for. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.